We're on the road from Pinch to the Kana Jungle Lodge. We're expecting about a five hour drive, but we've said that before. All we can do is sit back and enjoy the drive. No, that's not us on the ox cart. We have one of these little SUVs. There is a lot of traffic on this road. Wide loads and some high loads and live loads. That's two guys, two goats and a motorcycle. You never know what you might be sharing the road with. The roadsides are interesting. People selling their wares. And people just going about their daily chores. And before we know it, we have arrived. We find our rooms and settle in. Sure, we'd like to go on a nature walk. There's a river flowing right next to the lodge. The naturalist points out the small things, like this butterfly and this spider, and explains how this termite mound works. There's a herd of chital on the other side of the river. The walk's a welcome change after five hours on the road. It's time for cocktails, then dinner in the roundhouse. The gates open at sunrise, and we're not the only ones getting an early start. The vegetation is subtropical deciduous forest like the other parks. Our naturalist Mahes is great at birds, but we're looking for tigers. The many varieties of woodpeckers are especially striking. We get the word, the Mahouts have found a tiger. We're back on the elephants to see. Another sleepy tiger. The Mahout takes us around for another angle. Wait, it looks like we woke him up. Our best view yet. We can't stay and watch. More people are in line to see the tiger. So we are back on the road to see if we can find one. We find a gower. We enter an open grasslands with several large ponds. A serpent eagle is on the ground getting a drink. We see a small herd of barasinga or swamp deer. At one time, they were distributed throughout central India. Today, they're only here in Kana. In 1970, there were only 66 animals. Today, in Kana, they number over 500. Where there's water, you can find birds. But you might have to look close. We hear a thunderstorm approaching. This Langer mother is distracted. She leaves her baby, and it starts to cry, just like a human baby. We take shelter at a ranger station, and the sky opens up with rain and thunder. The storm passes in about an hour, and we head back to the lodge to dry out. In the morning, we get an early start in the park. Mahes is going to take us into the hills looking for our tigers. The Mahouts are out with their elephants looking for tigers, too. We're listening for alarm calls from langers, birds, and deer. We have to settle for birds and butterflies. The rain and thunder yesterday seems to have driven the larger animals deeper into the forest. After lunch, we head back to the meadow. Here's a nice sandbar and a raptor with a different name. It's changeable because it comes in several different color schemes. And here's a bachelor herd of Barasinga. They have up to 20 points on their antlers. The Mahouts didn't have any luck finding tigers either, so we call it a day and head back to the lodge. 
We're first in line at the gate in the morning. We watch the sunrise over the meadow. The mist still hangs over the grass. Nocturnal grazers like Sambar are getting ready to rest. And the day shift is waking up. We drive around, hoping for a tiger. The Barasinga are feeding in the ponds. The birds are out. We even find a bullfrog. The langurs come out to say goodbye. And we head back to the lodge. Back in our room, we finish packing. We say goodbye to Mahes and the staff. We're back on the road again to Raipur, the nearest airport. We sit back and enjoy the drive. Sharing the road with ox carts, the ubiquitous Tata trucks, the occasional camel, and schoolgirls on bikes. And along the roadside are reminders that this is India, a wheelwright shop, a woman selling dried cow dung, and women in saris working road construction, a pickup game of cricket, and wandering cattle. Here we are, almost to Raipur. From Raipur, we're flying to Kolkata, where we'll be staying the night. <laughs>